Hey gang, welcome back to another video. Now this week I'm doing something a little bit different, and rather than have me explain it to you now, I'll let me from the past explain it to you, because he'll do a better job. Plus he's got a friend with him. A few months back, you and Carissa came to Los Angeles and Mrs. Van Oaks and I met you guys down at Galaxy's Edge. And I shared with you that I had had this idea for building this lamp out of a moisture evaporator. And the more that I thought about it and the more we talked about it, it was sort of like, it sounded like it could be a fun thing where I could build my version of a lamp and you could build your version of a lamp. And so I figured, you know, why not? <laughs> and there's, there's no better place than when you're there to get inspiration from all that different stuff that's, that they've done. For sure. Whether it's the moisture evaporators walking in or any of the number of stuff hanging on any of the walls. You know, it just sounded like it could be kind of a fun way for us to sort of do something in the spirit of just like two friends who like to make Star Wars stuff doing their <laughs> own spin on, on things. And so, you know, it kind of brings us to, to now where we're both working on this project together, but separately. <laughs> and I like that we're doing things differently because that'll give everyone a chance to get different ideas and inspiration from multiple styles of building, which is yeah. always the thing that excites me. You do your thing. I'm going to do my thing. Okay. And then at the end, we both get to admire each other's awesome work. I love it. Let's do it. I'm going to go start working on mine. You go start okay. working on yours, and then we will check done. in later and see how each other has done. Perfect. Let's do it. Now, what started this whole build was the R5-D4 Droid Dome that I'd made for a previous video. And having kicked it around my shop for nearly a year, it struck me that it kind of resembled a lampshade. Now, once I had that in my head, I couldn't see it any other way and thought this might be an interesting use for it. Plus, it was an opportunity for me to brush up on my 3D modeling skills. And as an added bonus, sometimes it's just easier to make the parts that you need than to find them in the wild. So I got down to 3D modeling. This model is sort of an amalgamation of all the moisture evaporators I've seen over the years. But one thing I knew I wanted to do was to design it so that I could use PVC pipe to fill in parts of the design. So I designed some inset pieces that would allow me to press fit pieces of pipe together to create the top section and the three side spires. Something else I took into consideration was that I would need something to weigh down the parts. Thankfully, I was lucky enough to find someone on my local Buy Nothing group who was giving away a broken floor lamp, so I was able to reuse the weighted base and center post. And because I was 3D modeling this, I was able to notch out a void at the base of the model to allow for the actual floor lamp parts to fit inside it. And after a bit of 3D modeling and many hours of 3D printing, I had all of my parts. Now it was just a matter of gluing them together. I decided to do this glue up in sections, since I'm going to need to paint these, and having it in one piece would be a little challenging. When I had my sections together, I could switch my attention to the one part that isn't 3D printed, the big box in the middle. And for that, I decided to head over to the Maker Case website, where I can punch in the dimensions and how I want to join the boxes together, and it'll make the laser cutter files for me. Once the MDF box panels were cut, I started gluing five of the six pieces of my box together. I'm leaving the top panel loose, since I want to put some lights inside this area to give it a nice glow. So that panel will have to wait until final assembly to be installed. So I grabbed my 1-2-3 blocks to help keep everything square and started gluing up the panels. At this point, I pretty much had all of my pieces for the build, so I could get ready to paint. Because I didn't want to have to sand everything, I gave all of the parts a coat of truck bed liner spray. This goes on thick enough to hide the print lines and also adds some great texture, which should really help to give it that used universe look. Once everything was coated, I let it dry for four hours, and then it was time to dust my base layer with this cream-colored spray paint. I'm not looking for solid coverage. The dusting of these pieces will allow some of the black to show through, and it will give it a real mottled look. And when everything had sufficient paint, I could set them aside and shift my attention to the R5 dome. You may remember that I assembled, sanded, and primed this piece in a previous video, 
and I'll leave a link to it in the video description if you'd like to check it out. But since all of the prep work was done, I could jump right into painting, starting with a bright orange color. I chose this orange since I realized after printing it that any light passing through it would be the color of the filament I used. So going with orange made the most sense. This got two coats of paint to ensure even coverage and then left to dry overnight. At this point, I shifted my attention to all of the greeblies for this R5 droid head, and after spraying them in a gloss black enamel, I could apply some Aluma Luster with my airbrush to give them a really authentic metal finish. The following morning it was time to mask off and paint my accent color on this droid dome. But before I could do that, I wanted to help improve my odds of getting crisp lines by spraying the orange paint over my masking tape, since the orange paint will likely fill in any minor gaps in the tape before I spray on the next color. And when the orange paint was dry, it was time to spray on my accent. Since I wanted to peel the masking off as soon as possible, I used my blow dryer to speed up the process. And once the paint was dry, I could remove the masking and see how it turned out. Now it's not perfect, but it's pretty close and it's nothing that a bit of aging won't hide. At this point, it really felt like it was all coming together, so I grabbed all of the greeblies that I'd painted the day before and got to installing them. I found that some of the mounting points had a bit of excess paint in them and needed to be hollowed out to get the greeblies to fit, but a step-up bit made quick time of that. Everything else just slotted in place. Next up was adding the decals around the bottom edge. Master Droid Builder and friend of the channel Michael McMaster was kind enough to send me some of the foil tape he uses on his R5 droids, and I cut them down to size and got to installing. At this point, the dome was finished and it was time to shift my attention to getting the lights installed. Nova Stella, who's sponsoring this video, was kind enough to send me their rainbow LED strip lights, which I thought would work great for this build since I'll need something with a really thin profile and would also need it to be flexible enough to wrap around tight curves. So what I decided to do was use some 2-inch ABS pipe as a guide for all of the 3D printed parts, but also as a channel to feed the rope light through. Now this may be a little confusing right now, but it'll make sense in just a second. The first thing I need is the actual floor lamp base and posts. This will help to keep it from falling over. Then I can start adding in the lower section 3D print and the box section, followed by the 2-inch pipe that has the rope light running through it and is wrapped around it. The portion that's wrapped around it will create a glow through the vent panels in the box. So I'll grab the plug end of the light and feed it through the hole I made in the base, and then I can get it standing upright. Then it's just a matter of threading on the rest of the pieces and the rope light to make the moisture evaporator portion of the lamp. With everything in place, I could add on some additional greeblies to give it a bit more character, and then it was time to start weathering. I started with the burnt umber acrylic paint and water wash to the entire piece and used a damp towel to remove the excess. Then I followed it up with some burnt sienna to add a bit of rust to some of the details. And finally finished it off with raw umber to give it kind of a greasy look in a few places. 
I may go back and redo the overall color and weathering for the lamp at some point, but for now I'm good with how it's looking and can shift my attention to weathering the dome. For the dome I used the same burnt umber wash, but applied it much heavier since the surface didn't have any of the texture that the lamp base does and would run much more easily. And when it had dried, I could shift my attention to the metallic decals along the bottom edge and giving those a bit of grunge with the raw umber acrylic paint and wiping away the excess with a damp rag. The only thing left now is to trim the rope light to its final length and wrap it around the center post, which sounds like it would be easy, but it was not. When I eventually got it wrapped around the post, I added a small tab to cover the cut end of the rope light and then glued it in place with some CA glue. Then I could rest the dome onto the post and finally get a look at my moisture evaporator droid lamp. From what started off as a mashup of ideas, I'm happy to say it turned out just how I'd imagined, although I may go back and mess with the paint a little bit in the future. Well, that's going to do it for this one. Thanks for watching, and be sure to head over to the Smuggler's Room to see how Brian's lamp turned out. And if you've already seen his video, then be sure to like and subscribe for more. But most importantly, go make something.